In this video, we are going to discuss the fifth and the sixth game of my state tournament. Currently, I'm I've scored three point five points out of four. So now it's time for the it's time for the fifth game, and I am playing the fifth game on the board number four, and my opponent is having a rating of one thousand nine hundred and two, and I'm having the rating of one thousand six hundred and fifty four, and I am having the black pieces. And it was the morning round, so let's quickly jump right into the game. So my opponent with the white pieces starts out with one e4, and I prepared the French defense, and I knew that he plays the knight to d2 variation. And after knight to d2, I prepared c5 because it's actually the main variation and it's the main move. We have the tarage, and he decides to capture my pawn on d5. Uh, there is also one move to continue the game by playing knight g to f3, and the game continues by playing takes, takes knight to c6, and so on. But he decides to capture my d5 pawn, which is also a theory. Queen into d5, and now he plays a bit weird move, d into c5. And now definitely it's not the best move. The best move in this position is simply to play knight f3, and the line goes after pawn takes. Bishop comes queen d6, short castles, knight c6, knight b3, knight takes, and here the line goes on. Like there are two moves, h6 and bishop e7, and the line goes on. But he decides to capture my pawn on c5, so from here I'm on my own. So I capture the pawn with the bishop because it first of all it I, I'm simply capturing his pawn, and second I'm also developing my piece. So after playing bishop into c5. He decides to develop knight to f3. Knight f6, a very normal approach. I want to castle. Bishop to c4, and I decide to play queen to d6. Queen d8 is also one of the moves. In the game, I was also thinking to play queen h5, which is also a fine move. But I went for playing queen to d6. Queen e2, and I decide to start castle. Queen e2 is uh, the best move because many variations you are you are going to see that queen e2 is actually a very good move. He decides to castle and I play knight to c6. And uh, in this position, I took quite a bit of time, like around 10 minutes, and I decided to play knight to c6 because uh, what I was thinking in this position was how shall I continue the game? Because his idea is quite simple. He want to put the knight to b3, hit my bishop, and he want to put the bishop on g5. Put the rook on g1, hit the queen, and white is actually pretty comfortable. Compared to black, like I'm still stuck with the with the idea where should I develop my bishop to, from c8. Like I do want to develop my bishop to b7 or to perhaps c6. But like playing something like b6, we have knight b3, and my bishop is hanging. So I actually I didn't want to give up my bishop because the bishop looks pretty good, pretty pretty good piece in this position. Uh, just covering this strong diagonal. That is the reason I played knight to c6, knight b3, and I played bishop to b6, keeping the bishop. And he played bishop to g5, and here I played e5. After playing e5, my queen simply defends the knight so that if if it tries to capture my knight, I can simply capture the bishop with the queen. And the e5 pawn is currently protected with the knight and the queen. So my opponent simply responded with a very a uh, very common move, rook g1, simply hitting my queen, and this position already looks much favorable for white because white have been able to develop all his minor pieces, uh, even his castles develop the rook. Compared to black pieces, black bishop is or uh, is still stuck on c8, so not uh, not pretty happy. So after rook to g1, like uh, after playing bishop to b6, I calculated that not after bishop b6. After playing knight c6, I simply calculated that this position is going to reach. And after e5, rook g1, what I calculated back then was that after playing rook g1, I'm going to respond with knight to d4, which looks a pretty fine move because after knight takes, I'm going to capture with the pawn, and like it's a fine position. But uh, when this position landed, then I thought that perhaps queen e7 looks a much better move. Because I still defend the knight, and my idea could be to play bishop e6 or bishop to g4, hitting, pinning up this knight. He played h3, simply stopping my bishop h4, and also preventing back rank mates. 
So I played edge six, asking the bishop whether he wants to capture my knight or whether he wants to go back, and also come, uh, creating a uh, square for the king on h7. So he played bishop h4, I played bishop to f5, putting some pressure on the pawn on c2. So if he first played c3, also covering the squares of uh, b4 and d4 from the knight, I played rook to g8. Rook to e1, and from here I played e4. This uh, this is what I I decided. Uh, uh, this was my plan. After e4, he decides to play knight d4 because I'm simply hitting the knight. So he has to move the knight. After knight d4, I simply capture the knight. Knight takes, bishop takes, pawn takes. If he captures with the rook, rook takes, pawn takes, and this pawn is still weak. It's an isolated pawn. So he captured with the pawn, and this position, I, I thought that this position is completely fine because from here I saw g5. Bishop g3 and I was like, yeah, this position is at least playable because my <laughs> my opponent ha is having a weak pawn on d4, an isolated pawn, and uh, my pawn on e4 looks a, uh, looks a bit weak, but uh, not that weak that, uh, that it can be simply captured. So after playing bishop to g3, I decided to play rook e8. Uh, I took some time, but I find rook e8, and, but the, this, this was simply a wrong move. The best move in this position was to simply put my knight to g5, and the position is uh, like fine. Th that's the problem. When I played rook e8, I wanted to. I don't know what, what I thought, but simply <clears throat> developing my pieces, protecting some pawn on e4, stuff like that. He played bishop to b3, which suddenly surprised me. I thought that he's simply going to push his pawn, but he played bishop b3, which I, I still don't know what's the idea of playing bishop b3. The engine also don't understand uh, why why it is playing bishop, e3, bishop g3, bishop b3, sorry. After bishop b3, I played queen to b4. I'm simply hitting the pawn on d4. It pushed the pawn, I played rook g7. Rook g7, my idea in this position was to simply play rook g8, and I'm simply attacking the pawn on d5. And even if it pushes the pawn, I can put my knight to e8, hitting this e6 pawn, and the position should be fine. But actually, it's completely winning for, not completely, but the best move for white in this position is to play queen e3. Hitting this pawn, and the idea is to play rook e4, rook d4, hitting the queen. And the most important thing is, I can't play queen b6, because after queen trade, he's simply having bishop a a4, hitting my both the rooks, and he's simply going to be an exchange of winning the game. But he played d6 which was a bad move here i play simply bishop e6 trading of the bishop he played queen e3 not trading of the bishop i captured the bishop and here i play simply queen b6 because i didn't want to lose my a7 pawn he played rook to d4 rook a rook e6 he played a rook to d1 knight e8 and like in this position i was having like around 20 minutes and i uh, thought about 10 minutes, so I'm having 10 minutes left on my clock, and uh, he's actually having 30 minutes. So I was trying to find a win in this position, but uh, you can already sense it that there is no, uh, that uh, it's not winning for bl black. But actually, I was uh, trying to find some advantage that I can do. But definitely, it looks slightly better for white actually. So I, I simply thought of a drawish line. I played 98. He captured my e4 pawn. I captured the queen, rook takes, rook takes, pawn takes. And in this position, white is simply a pawn up. But here I played f6, this was my idea. I wanted to play king f7, king e6, and the d6 pawn is simply hanging. He played rook c1, king f7, this, I simply saw this one. And after rook c7 check, it looks like black is still losing a pawn, so white is again a pawn up. But here I played rook to b6, here I simply calculated it. After playing rook b6, he can't capture my rook because after takes, although he's having a pawn up, but my fortune for my king is much active. Second, he's having the double pawn on the b file, which actually makes the game draw. So he captured my a7 pawn, I captured this pawn, and I'm now hitting both the pawns on b2 and e3 pawn. So one pawn is going to fall, he played king f2, I captured this pawn, and from here, we agreed to a draw. Because it's a draw position, we can't, we both can't do anything like, we can take this game around like 1 to 2 hours, we can play this game, but nothing is happening, it's a draw. 
Uh, so yeah, uh, this was the this was the fifth game uh, on the fourth table, which uh, which uh, went into a draw. So yeah, this was the fifth game. Now uh, you can already sense that like I've scored four points out of five. Slowly and steadily, the game is becoming tougher. The opponents are getting tougher. And now let's quickly move to the sixth game. So in the sixth game, I am playing on the fifth table and my opponent is having the rating of 1867 and I'm playing with the white pieces, which is a good thing. So yeah, so let's quickly check out the game. So I'm playing with the white pieces and uh, I'm co you, I'm commonly a d4 player. So I started the game with one d4 and he played knight f6 and somebody told me before the game that he played the king's indian, which exactly happened. He played the King's Indian defense, which is uh, a very aggressive opening, I would say, a very attacking opening. And yeah, many players actually played because they want a win or something. Because like, the Drush players can't, uh, don't uh, play these attacking variations because it's a very risky variation. If you don't know the line, White is simply going to crush you. So after D6, I played F3. And I've already made a video on this, where, where, which I, when, uh, and uh, in the King's Indian, Against the King's Indian, I actually recommend f3, where white simply continue with bishop e3, queen d2, long castle, g4, h4, h5, and it's a good position. White simply get phenomenal chances to attack the black king, and it's a pretty good position. So after f3, he simply decides to castle, I play bishop e3, and he plays c5. So after c5, now it's actually, I would say, I simply capture the pawn, which is the best move according to the theory. He captured, I trade the queens, I capture the pawn on c5. So White is simply a pawn up after like nine moves. Um, we have traded the queen. We are in the end game now. Kind of end game because as the queens have been traded. So after bishop into c5, now I'm a pawn up and I'm also threatening to capture the pawn on e7. He played knight to c6 and it looks like 1800 just blend the pawn. But guys, no, it's a not it's not a pawn blender. It's common theory. In the theory, it's a, it's a pawn sacrifice you can say, but in the exchange. Uh, in the long term, it's a drawish game. So after knight c6, it, it doesn't mean that white can't win this game. In knight c6, I played rook to d1. And I think that perhaps I prepared this. Like, I thought this was simply a fine game. He played b6. In this position, I was actually thinking that he's going to continue with some kind of bishop e6. Or perhaps b6 was a fine move. Bishop b3. And here, I actually thought that he's going to continue with bishop a6. Hitting this pawn, putting pressure on the pawn, and something like that. But he played bishop b7, which I thought was not perhaps the best move. So I played knight to e2. Rook d8 check, king c1, and he played knight b7. He wants to take control of this dark squares, and perhaps he wants to put this knight uh, put this knight over here, put this knight over here, something like that. So here I simply play knight to b4, knight to b5. The idea could be to play something like knight to e4, I don't know. Uh, so he played knight to d5, knight to e5. After knight e5, I played knight d4, which was simply a bad move. In this position, the best move was simply knight to f4. And white is fine. White is having a slight advantage in this position. The, the reason is quite simple. Like I want to put my knight to d4, d5. So if you take, so if you play something like e6, trying to cover the d5 square, white can play bishop e2. Follow the rook g1 and it's a fine position. It's, it's extremely fine. But I play knight to d4. I don't know why I wanted to trade some pieces, which was simply a bad mentality many players have. I don't know why. Bishop into d4. He played bishop a6. Actually, my plan was to capture with the knight, but after knight takes, I thought that it's simply bad after knight g4. It's simply bad. I have to capture it, or else I'm going to be, lose my knight. It so takes, 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 takes. Like, this is hanging. The pawn is doubled up. He's having much activity. So black is the one who's, who's extremely favorite. I didn't want it to go into this variation. So I captured the bishop, bishop a6, and I captured the e5 knight. Again, a bad move. The best move and simple move was simply to play bishop c3. A fine move. White is simply better. Like if he takes, we have takes. We have the bishop pair, we are a pawn up, nothing problem, it's fine. But what I thought was, like, I thought that perhaps 
capturing the fourth moon. Third day, because on the next move he's going to capture my knight and we can use my bishop. So I thought like this is the fourth move, but bro, you get to do the bishop c3. And I have and I'm actually having a fine position. I'm even better. I'm having the advantage of 1.34 according to the engine. So it's extremely fine, but I don't know why. Like after here, the best move with this, and after trade, I can play something like this, and I'm still fine. But uh, I captured the knight, which was a bad move. And now you're going to uh, watch the power of the bishop. <laughs> I first played g3, <clears throat> covering the f4 square because <clears throat> bishop f4 was extremely dangerous move. The Indian says to capture the pawn, but after bishop f4 check, I thought that after king c2, uh, rook check, the Indian says king c3 is a fine move, but you can already sense that after rook f2, bishop is coming in, <clears throat> and you, in the practical game, you don't really want to play this. <clears throat> so I played g3 covering the f4, bishop b7, <clears throat> I played bishop h3 because I wanted to somehow develop my pieces. He played a6, knight a3, I want, don't want to play knight c3 because of takes takes to rook here. Black is simply better. So knight a3, rook d3, rook f1, defending it, bishop g7, spectacular move I would say, threatening bishop to h6. Knight b1, the reason is quite simple, like what I was preparing was, I thought perhaps king c2, here, here, bishop h6, here, take, and I thought this, but it's still losing. The problem is not this, the problem is after Take, I captured the rook, but in the exchange, my rook is hanging. So I calculated this, so perhaps his, he played this by calculating everything. So it looks like it's pretty good in calculation. I played knight to b1 because I wanted to cover this d2 square. Whenever he gives a check, I play king c2, he can't play rook d2 because the knight is covering that square. So he played rook e3, he wanted to put the knight a rook, in, a rook on e2. I played rook f2, he played bishop to d4. You want to put some attacks on the rook by putting some discovery. I played rook g2, hitting the bishop. e5, cementing the bishop on d4. Bishop g2, protecting the pawn. Rook check, king move, king g7. Because in this position, I actually wanted to push this pawn, hit this bishop somehow. And yeah, some stuff like that. So he first played king g7, knight c3. Uh, like developing simply the piece. Rook g1, <clears throat> uh, bishop h3. I moved the bishop because he's simply threatening something like this. I don't know. Uh, so I simply moved the bishop because, yeah, the reason I moved it because perhaps black can at any time put the bishop on c8 and it's already going to be deadly. I don't know. So I played bishop h3, rook h1, king b3. I decided to put the king to b3. The reason is whenever in the future, if black is able to get the b, uh, second rank, he won't be able to check my king. <clears throat> bishop c6, bishop to c8, a5, knight b5. I was like completely fine with the draw because you can already sense it like black is the one who is dominating. So after this trade, we are having the opposite color vision. I'm, in a, I'm a pawn up, so this should be a completely easy game for me to hold the draw. So I played bishop to c5, I, uh, he played bishop c5, I played bishop g7. I wanted to trade off one minor piece. Bishop b7, bishop to e8. I, I'm threatening to simply capture the pawn. King takes the rook check and I'm winning the bishop. Bishop c8, bishop d7. So he already sensed it that I'm fine with the draw. I'm, I'm absolutely fine with the draw. He played bishop e6. He's playing for the win. Definitely, bishop c6 is a bad move. Knight c7 was actually the best move. Bishop b7, king a4. And my king is actually entering and white is actually already having some advantage in the position, like after rook f1, king b5 takes, knight to d5, losing this b6 pawn and like, white is, white is, white is better. But bishop c6, rook f1, f4, I decide to give up the pawn because I have to give up the pawn, I don't uh, saw any way to defend it, like if I try to play something like this, rook f2 hit this, and on the next move, I don't know, perhaps he can capture this knight and put the bishop on d4, hitting my b2 pawn. 
a very complicated game. I played F4. At least I wanted to capture the remove this center pawn. Played uh, most of the pawns. I played A4, like cementing the structure. He gave a check knight c3, and he he played rook f2, which was simply a blunder. In this position, the best move was to simply play bishop c8, and it's completely winning for black actually because first of all, queen side structure is already blocked, although I'm a pawn up. Second, he's having the king side majority, and this pawn is extremely weak. He can simply attack this like this, and it's over for me. It's, the game is over actually. But he played rook, he wanted to trade the rooks, I played rook d8, and guess what, the bishop is actually trapped. So like rook a8, the bishop is trapped, you can't defend it, so he captured the pawn, and he saw this, even I saw this. So basically he, started, he gave up the uh, bishop, he was forced to give up the bishop, uh, and in the return he get the two pawns. But now it's good for me, like I'm not, like, I'm not losing now, h5, e5. <clears throat> he played rook e2 because like I'm pushing my pawn so he wanted to capture the pawn I played rook e8 he tried to push the pawn he wanted to make a queen I, like, I was absolutely not afraid of this because my bishop as long as my bishop is covered in the h1 square even if he makes the queen I, I'm, I can simply happily sacrifice the bishop I'm having no problem I played knight f4 rook f2 and I decided to capture the bishop for the knight. And I was like, now this is, at least I'm sure that this is not losing. This should be equal. Uh, this should be equal. I, he's having the three pawns against the bishop. Uh, very, very common, unbalanced. Usually the three pawns usually wins the game because it's uh, usually hard for the piece to hold it. But in this current position, I think it's holdable. It's easily holdable. Rook f8 check, like... <clears throat> King F8, I simply gave a check. I was extremely fine with the draw. Like, first of all, uh, at this particular point of time, I, I was having around like 10 minutes. He's having 40 minutes on the clock. So I was like, I wanted to repeat the position. I wanted to repeat the position like twice. I, I, I was not sure that I'm going to repeat the position. I'm going to repeat the position thrice to take a draw. But like to gain more time, I, I was repeating the second time position. But he thought that I wanted to draw. So he didn't want it to repeat the position. He played h3. And the, basically, in this position, I was thinking to push the pawn. But in this position, king f6. And if I capture the pawn, I lose the rook. I capture this pawn, I lose this pawn. Even if I try to play bishop e8, trying to go for this pawn, king f8, and I lose one piece. So nothing is happening. I played rook a7, trying to go for this pawn, and trying to push my a pawn. King f8, I gave a check. And I thought that he's going to play king g7. Uh, and I'm going to capture this pawn, push, something like this, a5, make a queen, takes chicks, and knights a drawish king. Where white is having slight advantage. But he played this. And I, I don't know. I don't know. I played this. It's over. It's made. It's sad made, actually. When I simply... Like he played king e7. Many players usually what they did, what they do is like they say uh, they see a uh, one movement and they simply play it fast. Like one movement, like it's like they simply uh, move fast and press the clock as hard as possible. Like, but I was like completely sad for him. I I like when he played king e7. I was like I simply confused. I simply put my like hold my rook, put my rook to e8 like very slowly and like uh, press the clock very slowly and we both were confused we are like bro it's a mate simply bl blended the mate actually from deep off my heart felt bad for him because he played such a good game like from the start to the end but sim simply got checkmated like this so i simply felt bad for him but like we can't help it right? yeah it, chess is a game of blunder i won it so I'm fine with it. So after 56 move, he, I, I simply checkmated my opponent and yeah. I scored 5 points out of 6. And yeah, this was a, <laughs> not, a, not a good game by me definitely. But uh, we both made tremendous mistakes. Uh, but like 
definitely i like that that's the level the level of section 100 and 1800 uh but i hope that you guys have liked the game love the game like love the imbalances the blunders usually happen in the between the 1600 and the 1800 level players you can learn from it by by watching the games of lower level like the amateur we are basically amateur i won't say that i'm a pro a professional player because like professional players usually i i call them like grandmaster like having the rating of above 2500 like i'm we, we both are having like 1800 and 1600 so definitely we are simply amateur players not professional so definitely by by watching the games of uh, amateur players you can actually sense the same mistake you do as we do so perhaps this might help you to improve your game if this did then make sure to like the video share the video subscribe to the channel if you are new to our, uh, new to our channel and i'm going to see you soon i'm going to come up with these dressing videos because three rounds is still pending like we have completed the sixth round there are total nine rounds of the tournaments the first four players are going to be selected for the nationals to represent our our state and the nationals is happening in delhi so let's uh see what is going to happen so it's going to be very much fun i'm going to come up I'm going to upload uh, the rest of the three games uh, tomorrow. So yeah, so I'm going to see you soon. Till then, stay tuned and keep watching. Watch our chess.